Welcome back, everyone, to the GoCast podcast. And we have heard the arguments lately. Thanks to Noah Lyles voicing his opinion on the NBA champions. But one thing everyone can agree with, winning the chip in the association isn't easy. If it was, some of these greats would have won. While not winning one doesn't necessarily mean that you or your teams weren't great, it does beg the question, well, why couldn't you get at least one? That question, in my opinion, definitely applies to some teams that we will be discussing today. As I look at three very well put together teams that had all the elements of a champion, but just ran into one of these roadblocks. But first, if you enjoy NBA breakdowns and analysis, please like and subscribe to the channel as we continue to grow and improve. Can't do it without you, so let's hop right in. Denied by Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls, 1997 Utah Jazz. The 97 Utah Jazz might not sound like world beaters on paper, but when you look over their record and even their playoff run, it tells a completely different story. While not the most flashy team with guys boasting highlights all over the place, they had the perfect Batman and Robin combo with Hall of Famers Karl Malone and John Stockton. A solid third option in crafty vet Jeff Hornacek, a capable defender in Byron Russell, and well, Greg Ostertag. Not to mention Antoine Carr, Shannon Anderson, and Adam Keefe off the bench. So hearing those names, you probably know they were pretty top heavy on the court. On top of that, one of the coaching greats in the NBA, Jerry Sloan had the reins of this workhorse-like team. With a 64-18 record and Karl Malone snagging his first NBA MVP in 97, also adding in a top 10 offense and defense, they nearly had every box checked for a championship-built team. Unfortunately, on the other side of the conference were these guys. The Chicago Bulls a year removed from one of the greatest seasons in the NBA, which they follow up with even better offense and better defense than the Jazz. Even then, as the Jazz just pretty much ran through the Western Conference in the West, it seemed like maybe the mystique and freight train success of the Bulls might be waning. Although they too had little difficulty in their conference running through the East with ease. No, this isn't the finals with the Byron Russell Jordan shot. It was still memorable for the infamous flu game. With the series tied 2-2, one can wonder if this great team might have pulled off the unthinkable had Mike not played. Nonetheless, the Jazz came up short that game and was sent packing in game six. While truly a team worthy of championship gold, Jordan and those Bulls were just that good, and Malone, Stockton, nor Hornacek would ever get the opportunity to hold a Larry O'Brien in their careers. Denied by Kobe Bryant and the Los Angeles Lakers, 2002 Sacramento Kings. While the 1997 Jazz were a stoic, old-school, fundamental basketball team, the Sacramento Kings was almost all flash and flair. Headed by Chris Webber coming into his own as a player during these years and proving his status as an all-star, I'm sure if you were alive, you remember him running wild with Mike Bibby, Doug Christie, and Peja Stoyakovich. A lethal group that could punish teams inside and out. But you cannot forget the tough veteran that is Vlade Divac. Even nearing the end of his career, Divac proved to be almost as effective and vital to this young team's success. Led by veteran coach Rick Adelman, the now Hall of Famer, and anchored by guys like Bobby Jackson and a young Hito Turkey Glue. This team was good. Very good. First place in the West good with a 61-21 record. The second best offense in the league that year and a top 20 defense. Again, if you were alive and watching the NBA back then, this team was hard not to watch. Just think of the current Memphis Grizzlies with a team of guys with a chip on their shoulders and solid pieces all around. With the Eastern Conference living up to that Eastern Conference moniker as it was nearly as top heavy as the West back then, all these Kings had to do was exercise one demon. Sacramento had been bounced the previous two years by Kobe Bryant and the Los Angeles Lakers sparking a little rivalry. As Sacramento would creep closer and closer to the NBA Finals, every year they had to come face to face with Kobe, Shaq, and Phil Jackson. Although they were getting better and better each year, they still seemed to always come in as the underdog, and while they would throw some heavy punches, they would always come up short. I remember how the 2002 Western Conference Finals series was so intense. Every game was high emotion, with guys stepping up at every moment. If C. Webb and crew were if C. Webb and the crew were going to get it done, this was the year. And it seemed like it was going to be, but in an overtime thriller, the Lakers limped away victorious and that version of the Kings missed out on their best opportunity to bring home a chip. Denied by LeBron James and the Miami Heat, 2012 Chicago Bulls. Man oh man, the big what if. If Derrick Rose never gets injured in the first round of those playoffs, the outcome of that year's championship may have been drastically different. This was coach Tom Thibodeau at his finest as a coach. After an impressive 2011 season where they went 62-20, the 2012 Chicago Bulls followed up with a 15-16 season and still top of the Eastern Conference. Maybe one of the top starting fives during those years, MVP level Derrick Rose was joined by his sidekick Luau Ding, 
Joaquin Noah, Carlos Boozer, veteran Rip Hamilton, and journeyman Ronnie Brewer. The solid young help in C.J. Watson, Todd Gibson, and sharpshooter Kyle Korver. Also way down the bench was a rookie Jimmy Butler. Even for a team in the 2010s, this team had an old school vibe to them. A superstar who could score at high levels and was nearly unstoppable? Check. Sidekick who was a glue guy and could do multiple things when needed and Luol Ding, check. Tough interior defenders and big men who weren't always counted on to score but could as well as rebound in Noah, Gibson, and Boozer could do a little something on defense, check. A veteran who could keep them afloat in tense moments in Rip Hamilton, check. A couple of sharpshooters that could come off the bench and light it up in spot minutes in CJ Watson and Kyle Korver, check. They literally had everything to contend even with the still tough Western Conference. However, unlike the others, LeBron James didn't technically stop this Bulls team. It's what he did in 2011 that gets him on the thumbnail by locking down then MVP Derrick Rose in the crucial Eastern Conference Finals and derailing that Bulls team that was well constructed from moving on to face the Mavericks. The question for this is what if? What if we got the 2012 Bulls versus the Heat in the Eastern Conference Finals? Would the outcome have been different? We'll never know. But I do believe that this iteration of the Bulls would have used their top defense to take down the very young OKC Thunder en route to a championship. But these are just my opinions, and while there was no guarantee any of these teams would have celebrated a championship parade, each had very good odds and chances, if not for certain circumstances. But how about you guys? Do you agree or disagree? Are there some legacy teams that you feel were primed for the chip but just had one huge hurdle? Let me know in the comments section and also if you want to ascend to go status like number 23, like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you all for watching and we will be back soon with more content.